Hello, hello. Welcome back to Let's Talk Ray Bradbury. If you have not subscribed to our channel, please do. So today on Let's Talk Ray Bradbury, we are up to story number 35 of 100 from the collection, The Stories of Ray Bradbury. Today's tale is from 1951. It is entitled Embroidery. It's an extremely short uh, story. Uh, in it, we meet three old women who are working on an embroidery on the porch of their country house. Um, it's the largest and most intricate embroidery that they've ever done. At 10 minutes to 5, one of them feels compelled to go into the house and to shell the bowl of peas on, on the table. Uh, one of them sort of indicates to her that that would be stupid, and she realizes it, and she sets back down and continues to embroider. Um, brought on by um, the, the idea of shucking of shelling peas, uh, which she feels to be about the most domestic thing she could do, um, the three of them sort of reminisce about uh, the nature of, of the soul and they decide that a woman's soul is in fact in her hands and it's um, it's her, what her hands do that sort of define her. Um, but it's becoming quickly apparent that we are on the cusp of, of some sort of unknown to us apocalypse. Um, and then uh, near the end of this very short story, um, they sort of sense flames out of the periphery of their eyes on the horizon. But they uh, keep their heads down and they keep moving their um, swift little fingers um, and flicking the needles through the embroidery um, um, all the more faster, all the more urgently, trying desperately to hold the world together. So um, this would have to be the most vague and subtle example of apocalyptic fiction that I've ever seen before. It is very, very vague. Um, uh, you really do have to sort of stretch... Um, to find these apocalypse connections, but they are there. Um, it's beautiful, um, and yet, um, you know, I get what Bradbury was going for, but it's maybe slightly underwhelming in its effectiveness. I don't, I think maybe it could have benefited from a little bit more um, explicitness, um, but still is a pretty beautiful um, a story with a lot to say. Um, I think the main metaphors here is um, this idea of a woman's hands in her soul, or soul in her hands. And basically what they're saying is that um, these women in their life, they've, they, they use basically the hard work of their hands to sort of ho um, hold the chaotic life, um, home life together. And I think that's very much a, um, a story that's still relatable to this day. And, you know, when we're in these times where um, gender and family structures and all these things are falling apart and sort of even um, the traditional is being ridiculed, um, but yet... Um, some of this chaos we're going through right now in throughout our world, I think, is partially maybe um, um, the result of these sort of these homes that are falling apart as these um, as the roles of people have changed. And we haven't really, um, it, you know, it's one thing to say, oh, you're sexist for, for thinking that a woman's place is in the home. It's not that. It's the idea that we really, um, in the last few decades, for many people, um, the family structure has changed and disintegrated, and we haven't really put anything uh, back in its place um, that is as in, apparently as effective as um, the old ways used to be of woman in the home, man at work, um, kids cared for, constantly monitored, and um, we, we, we've been out of this time where um, not only can most women um, or just homemakers in general, be they man or women, can't really afford to stay home because they need to um, support the family with a, with a job. Um, and yet, um, we do know that, you know, crime and delinquency and all these things are related to sort of the lack of supervision for people, uh, for kids especially. And that, that's undeniable, but, you know, we haven't really put in a place an effective uh, way to sort of counter that absence that has been left by um, you know, homemakers um, entering the workplace and trying to do um, a second job, basically, um, to go along with their sort of domestic role. And um, in America, um, uh, even until recently, with um, these latest um, um, social bills being passed and infrastructure and all these things, um, we're still debating over the, the, the concept of creating... Um, you know, universal child care, <laughs> you know, so, um, so kids will have some supervision and it, it's really interesting. And I think, um, maybe I'm stretching a little bit, but I think that this is all very much 
the type of things that Bradbury sort of wants you thinking about in this story. Um, you know, it's a good little it's a good little tale. Not fully effective, but um, I like it. Uh, a lot to think about. Um, this was story number thirty five of one hundred. We're moving on to story number thirty six of one hundred next time. That tale is The Golden Apples of the Sun from 1953. So if you're having fun uh, following along with me, be sure to read The Golden Apples of the Sun, and I'll be back to discuss it in a few days. See you later.